This is part three of our new teaching that we're doing on uh, Psalm 34. And we're talking about the promises of Yahuwah that are found in this particular psalm. And, and uh, we, on the first two sessions, we, I think we got down to uh, verse 9 or verse 10. So I'll, I'll just read, read those two verses to you again in just a moment here. But um, I've shared with you all that uh, this is one of my favorite psalms. And, uh, of course, there's so many that are good in here, but uh, uh, this is one that you ought to memorize. This is one you ought to think about and meditate upon, you know, because it, there's so much here that's said that applies to us. And I, I've shared with you, this is a Psalm of David, King David, and uh, these are the words that he spoke about Yahuwah. And the same things applies to us, the promises of Yahuwah that he's, uh, made provision for his for his own for his children uh, applies to all his children. Um, you know, David said that he sought Yahuwah and Yahuwah heard him and delivered him from all his fears. And Yahuwah would do the same for you today if you'll seek Him. If you if you will realize that that no matter what fear that you may have, and everybody has some type of fear that tries to come upon you and I. But the scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, that Yahuwah has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. So fear is a spirit, and it comes from Shatan. It's, it's, it's something to drive you, uh, to torment you. When I say drive you, I mean drive you to, to where you're speaking words of doubt, words of unbelief, words of destruction. You know, if you've ever been around someone with a lot of fear, you'll notice that uh, their fears will come out of their mouth. And they'll speak things and, and, and almost prophesy of things to come that haven't come to pass yet. But to them, they're so real, they believe in them more than they do in the word of Yahuwah. They'll, they'll speak their fears. They'll talk about, you know, all those terrible things going to happen to them. Uh, you know, they're afraid that um, their children are going to do this, or they're going to do that. They're afraid of this, afraid of that. It sounds a lot like Job, where he said, the thing I have greatly feared has come upon me. And, and, and you'll find that, that that was the reason why Shaitan or Satan was able to have an open road into Job's life was mainly because of the fear that he operated in. And, of course, he didn't have the revelation and the understanding of the, of the scriptures that, uh, that we have today. And so we have the, 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 the blessing of knowing what the scripture has to say concerning uh, not only Yahuwah's promises, but that how the enemy will try to use fear against us to, to carry out his will in our lives. The scripture declares that Shaitan or Satan goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And you need, you need as an individual, just like I need to do, is to make up our minds that we're not going to be devoured by the enemy. That we are not going to be like the scriptures that says, Yahuwah said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We're going to search the scriptures. We're going to seek him as the scriptures declare. And we're going to find out you know, uh, how to live while we're here on the earth, that we can operate in, in, in Yahuwah's uh, promises of his protection for us, his blessing upon our lives that he wants to, to bestow upon his own, and they're all here in the word. Psalm 34, we're going to read it verse 9. O fear Yahuwah, ye his saints, for there is no want or lack to those that fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek Yahuwah shall not lack any good thing. Now that's a promise right here. Here's a promise right here. That if you would seek Yahuwah, that you would not lack anything. Now, when the, when the scripture talks about seeking Yahuwah, it's not talking about, you know, say for one hour a week that you go to, to uh, synagogue, you go to church, you go to assembly, wherever you, you have some type of formal, say, uh, uh, worship. This is talking about your whole life is consistently seeking Him. That your whole life is surrounded about Him. That's what it's talking about. You, the Scriptures declares that we're to seek things uh, that are above, not on things on the earth. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yahushua said that. 
where your treasure is, where is your heart? That means where do you spend the, the majority of your time focused on? Is it worldly things? If it is, then your treasure is on worldly things. And the scripture warns, warns about that. It says to, it's, to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of Yahuwah. <laughs> I don't want to be an enemy of Yahuwah. But if you're a friend of this world, meaning that, you know, that your heart is really wrapped up in the world and what's going on in the world, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, all the things that, that's involved in this world, if you're, the majority of your time is focused on that, that doesn't mean that we become hermits and that we you know, just read the Bible 23 hours, 24 hours a day or whatever. You know, it, it's talking about that our main focus of life is surrounded about the fact that we, that we, that we know the Creator, we have a relationship with Him, we know we've been bought with a price, we've given our hearts to Him, He's made us new creatures in Yahushua HaMashiach, and that our sins are not only forgiven, but that we become new creatures in Yahushua HaMashiach. If you, if you receive the Ruach, the Spirit of Yahuwah, into your life, you belong to Him. And because you belong to Him, then our lives, then we, should, we ought to lay down our lives, as the Scripture says, for the, for, for the brethren or for, the, for others. Because He freely gave His, his life for us. And so this is, this is the, the thing that, that this is talking about here is, is seeking Yahuwah. It's talking about a, a total commitment of your heart to Him. And if you do that, you won't lack any good thing. <laughs> You're not, you won't miss out on anything that the world is offering, let me tell you that. <laughs> I mean, to have the joy of Yahuwah is more than any natural pleasure upon this earth. To have the joy of Yahuwah that, that just bubbles up on the inside of you because you know Him, you have a relationship with Him, you have fellowship with Him. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You may have been forsaken by someone, but Yahuwah said, I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. What, what comfort is, the, is in knowing that? Because He's not a man that He should lie. He can't lie. So He won't leave us. He's with us, and he's here to to to, to uh, not only to, to fellowship with us. You know, it's it's important that we have fellowship with him. He he desires. That's why you and I were created, because he wanted he wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to communion with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants you to talk to him. <laughs> a lot of times I go to the park, and I there's a particular place that I that. My, my place that I like to go and meet with Yahuwah. I just, I just have a special place there, even though I, I pray a lot in my car, I pray just wherever I can, but there's a special place that I like to go, and uh, I'll, I'll just walk around in the park there. It's, it's got a nice uh, secluded place, and, and I can talk to Yahuwah. I can just tell him my heart, what's on my heart, and then I listen to him. I just be quiet and listen to him as I'm walking. He speaks to me and he reveals things to me. He tells me things. He comforts me. And that's what he wants to have, that kind of relationship as well with you. He wants you to fellowship with him. And uh, the more that you do this, let me encourage you about this. It says, delight yourself in Yahuwah and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, a lot of times people have read that scripture and they think, Delight in Yahuwah, or delight, it says, in, of course, in our English translations, delight in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. But we know that that actually says, delight yourself in Yahuwah, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, it's not talking about that he'll give you anything, you know, in this natural thing, that you, in the natural world that you want. It's talking about the desires that you have will be from him. Delight yourself in him, and he'll, the desire, he'll, he'll give you the desires. He'll put the desires in you that are, that are from him. And the desires he puts in there for you would be his, his direction of your, his will for your life to be carried out. And there's nothing more that can bring more satisfaction to you on this earth knowing that you're walking in the will of Yahuwah. You know, I'm, I, I'm called to preach and to teach his word. I get so uh, blessed by doing this. I, I'm so... Uh, when I do, when I operate in the gift that he's given me to teach and to preach, you know, it's, I can't express it except that I know that I know that I'm doing what he wants me to do. And it brings such a great satisfaction to me knowing that. 
There's nothing else out there in the world that can bring that type of satisfaction into your life. And whatever you're called to do, you may not be called to teach and preach His Word. You may be called to do other things, but, but I can promise you this, that if you seek Yahuwah with your whole heart, He'll give you the desires of your heart. He'll put those desires in you that are from Him. Let me continue reading so we can finish this whole chapter up. I'm not going to do it tonight. We'll get a few more verses in here, then we'll have to go with one more session. But verse uh, 11 says, Come, children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of Yahuwah. Now, again, when it's talking about fear, it's not talking about a fear like you're afraid of him. Like if, like I said, you know, if, if I were to walk into a room and my, and my kids were at home and they, they saw me, they wouldn't go running into the other room because they were afraid of me. No, they have a respect for me, but they're not afraid of me like I'm going to do them harm. In fact, they know that I love them unconditionally. They'll, that when they were young, they're grown now, but you know when they were little, they'd come running up to me with their open arms and throw their hands up to me, you know, and and just you know they were so glad to see me. But they did respect me, and they knew when I said what I you know said something for them to do that they better do that, or they would they would get correction because of that. So, Yahuwah is the same way. He the, the scripture says, "For whom Yahuwah loves, He corrects." <laughs> He also corrects us, but he corrects us through his word, not through accidents and sickness and disease. He doesn't teach us that way. That's not his method of teaching. His me method is the word. All scripture is given by inspiration of Yahuwah, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. See, that's what Yahuwah uses to instruct us and teach us and to correct us is his word. That's getting off the subject a little bit here, but I did want to just plug that in here. Um, but the rest of this says, What man is he that desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Now, who isn't out there that would love to have, that would love life, in other words, to enjoy your life and to have many days on this earth? Well, you know, most people would like to have that. Good days and long days, long life. Then he's going to tell you how to do that. <laughs> Keep your tongue from evil. Now, when it says keep your tongue from evil, it's not just talk, it's not talking about saying curse words. I mean, that would be involved, of course, but that's not what it's talking about. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Now, speaking uh, your, your tongue from evil would be to give, you know, the children of, of Yasharel, when they were about to go in the promised land, if you remember Joshua and Caleb went into the, went to spy out the land with the ten spies. And Joshua and Caleb were the only two that came back with a good report. Now the good report was that they believed Yahuwah, and they, even though they were giants in the land, they said that it's just like Yahuwah said, it's a land flowing with milk and honey, there's giants in the land, but we're well able to overcome them. And the others came back with an evil report, and said there's giants in the land, that we, we're as grasshoppers in their sight, and we, you know, in other words, paraphrasing what was said, they said that, you know, <coughs> we can't overtake them. You know, in other words, they, they said that we're, 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 we're beaten, we can't win, you know. <laughs> but Yahuwah said, it already told them that every piece of land that they, their foot would, would tread upon, he had given, already given it to them. See, here's the thing that you, that you help you in learning about faith, is faith is speaking what Yahuwah has said to be the truth. You embrace that, and you Yahuwah, Yahuwah honors, when you honor him with your faith, he'll honor you with carrying out his word in your life. Joshua and Caleb were the only two that entered into the promised land. Every, all the others died off, and their children entered into the promised land. But those that had that rebelled, and uh, gave back an evil report. In other words, this is this is an evil report. When we speak against the word of Yahuwah, we are actually uh, giving an evil report. And that's not going to give you long life and good days. We're going to have to stop here because I'm running out of time on my on my on my tape my teacher recording here. We'll pick this back up on our next session. But uh, this is going to this really will explain a lot of things to you about maybe things that have gone in your life in the direction that it has.
Now, this is not to bring condemnation because it, we, we are, we've all been ignorant about certain things. But we want to get out of the ignorance and, and, and find out the truth and start walking according to the way that Yahuwah is instructing us to walk. So, thank you for your time. Please share this on uh, Facebook and with others. And uh, we'll pick back up on, and continue this on our next session. Shalom.